Hey, this is Corey Glenn, and I wanted to tell you about a new product that Blue Sky Bio is offering that I'm really excited about. I think this solves a lot of problems that many dentists encounter when they're doing full arch dentistry, uh, namely, how do I accomplish a really uh, inexpensive temporary restoration, but one that won't break constantly. If you've ever done many of these, you know that they're very prone to breaking when a patient can finally go from removable to fixed. Uh, and acrylic and milled PMMA and many of those things, they just don't hold up that well without some metal reinforcement. So this is an excellent solution that's low cost uh, that also does not require a mill, which is the other biggest advantage. So let me show you a couple of ways that I use them, and then I'm going to show a video of a, a novel way that you can do this all digitally and have it made ahead of time and really cut down on the fabrication time. So this is what they look like. Uh, they're made by BioLorin and it's called Trilor again. And you can see the cross-hatched pattern of fiberglass embedded in this composite. These come in three and a half and five and a half millimeter wafers, um, but they're incredibly strong. And yet they're already trimmed down enough into these small thicknesses and the shape of an arch. So it enables you to be able to uh, trim these chair side with either a lab handpiece or a high speed handpiece. Uh, no need for a mill. So if you took an example like this, there's many ways that you can use this. I'm going to sh just show you a couple. Uh, one would be if, if you did uh, a restoration where you had some temporary cylinders sticking up out of that, you can mark those cylinders by taking a piece of pink base plate wax doubled over, just press it into the top of this, marking where your cylinder locations are and then transfer that over and lay it on your trilor bar and you can mark the locations of those cylinders. Uh, this enables you to just punch some small holes in there with a handpiece, set it over, and then you can do a pickup of this bar with cement, with acrylic, with composite, whatever your material of choice would be on that. Uh, if it's a fresh surgical site, obviously cover it with a piece of rubber dam. Rubber dam. But you can see here, after, that I've, after I've picked it up, I'm also going to just uh, freehand in the shape with a pencil or a marker of the shape that I want uh, to accomplish to conform it to the arch. So here it is trimmed down, and even in these small dimensions, this is incredibly strong. I've, I've actually taken this very restoration uh, to many, many classes and had about 500 people try to break this, and no one was able to. So from there, if the patient had an existing denture, you could hollow it out and do a pickup of this material on the inside. Then all you have to do is uh, salt and pepper the underside to make it cleansable and ovate. If you uh, don't mind doing a next day or a much later that day restoration, you could actually just scan this bar now that it's in their mouth and design a denture in the Blue Sky Bio uh, full denture software. And that's what I actually did here. That's how I got the very precise uh, slot created for this. And so the denture was made to just sit right over the top of this with a little bit of a spacer. And now I can make some extremely small holes for long screws to fit through this. Do a pickup now, and then you can simply cut flanges off, uh, salt and pepper the underside, make it cleansable and ovate, and you end up with a very strong temporary that's aesthetic, <clears throat> that's low in profile, and that's indestructible. And this is going to be under about $100 or so to fabricate. These are really, really affordable to do. Now, in the remainder of this video, I'm going to show you how you can somewhat digitize this technique. So you get the best of both worlds. You get the, uh, the digital speed, the precision, uh, but you also get the uh, cost effectiveness of not having to have a mill. You can just do this with chair side tools, handpiece and such. So what I'm going to show you in the following video is going to be how do you make the restoration ahead of time and then create a precision slot for the trilower bar to slide into and then also create a template to be able to design that trilor bar ahead of time. Now once you have that designed ahead of time, you just print off the template and you print off the temporary. Uh, you trim the trilor to exactly match the template and then it's going to slide right into this and now you have it all made ahead of time. No chair side conversions to do. Uh, so let's jump now to the video of how I accomplished that. So let me just show you there's a dozen ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to just show you one of them right now. So the first thing I'm going to do, I always just start with my bridge. This could have been designed in ExoCAD and 3Shape in the Blue Sky Bio Denture module. It doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to always start by duplicating this because I want to have one that I can come back to that I know is unaltered. Okay. So what I will do first is that I'm going to take this, uh, this temporary and I'm going to hollow this. 
okay? Now, what I'm trying to do in hollowing this uh, is separate an inner shell and an outer shell. So you can see how much is it being hollowed by right now? It's two millimeters. I want to make this be 0 0.5, 0 0.7, something in that realm. So I'm going to say 0 0.5 and update the hollow. And here you can see what this gives me. Okay, I'll accept this. You'll see why I did that here in just a moment. So again, this looks like the unchanged temporary. So what I'm going to do now is use my select tool. There's two shells that exist here, an inner and an outer. I'll double click the outer one and then just push delete on the keyboard, leaving me this inner shell. Okay, I can circle some of that. If you just go to modify, select all, it'll select all of this. So this is the inner shell. This has basically been shrunk in all dimensions by 0.5 millimeters. But what I'd like to do now is turn this inside out. Okay, so flip normals, edit, flip normals, and now we have this. All right, so I have my original temp. I have uh, now, basically that's just a hacked way of getting a smaller temporary, one that's been offset by half a millimeter. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna import one of the Trilor bars. Now I have scanned these in um, and I'll try to put a link to it in the video. Uh, but I, these come in three and a half, five and a half, and seven and a half. Generally I'm using the three and a half. That stuff is indestructible so I don't really find much use for the much larger ones. And this is what they look like. Okay, this was just this is how they come right out of the box. It's just a wafer of this uh, composite fiberglass material. Now I'll push T for transform on the keyboard. I'm going to position this. Try to position this up inside of the shrunken restoration that I made. Okay, I'm trying to, to make this where it uh, best adapts to the shape that we've got and maximizes material thickness around this. And sorry about the noise in the background if you hear that. My dog chewing a deer antler. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I'm going to scoot it back just a bit. Now I notice that this is going to be fairly thin right up in this area. So what I might want to do is lean that downward just a little bit. Pull it up slightly. So now I'm in a greater thickness of material with this. All right. Uh, this might be a problem right here. I might need to lean that up slightly. Now this may not make uh, obvious sense to you yet why I'm doing this. So just bear with me. We'll get there. All right. Now we're talking and up ever so slightly. All right, so I've maximized my material here. Now what I want to do, since my trilor bar is in the biggest bulk of material for this uh, shrunken thing, is now I'm going to use the plane cut. So let's go to select this model and edit plane cut. And I want to look right along parallel to this trilor material and go just above that. Okay, so you see what I've generated there, except, so it's just ever so slightly taller than the trilower material. Let's do that again for the bottom. So plain cut. Just ever so slightly larger. And we want to flip this. We want to keep the middle section that co coincides with what you're seeing here. Okay. Now, if you haven't figured it out yet, what I'm doing right now is I'm creating uh, more or less a template that I'll be able to print this object right here, lay it on top of one of these trilor wafers, and it will give me an outline of exactly how to cut this trilor material where it can fit inside of a slot that I'm going to create in this. Okay. And you'll see in a moment how I do that. Uh, but this is looking good so far. So let's minimize this. And so I want you to imagine if you can see in 3D. 
this is the slot that's going to be created. Do you see how, by the fact that I shrunk that by a half a millimeter, do you see how that left an outer shell that will print uh, with the full facial surface? There's not going to be any interruptions in that, so it'll maintain some structure, structural integrity. Um, but it's going to allow me to create a slot from the backside where if I trim that trilor bar to this exact same shape, you know, in this profile, that this trilor should just slide right into the slot that was created. And so that's what we're going for right here. Now, let's turn back on the smaller offset temp. And I want you to notice right here, right now it's entirely encased inside of this. Really what I want is I want a slot, the entire backside of this so that I can slide that in easily. How can I accomplish that? Let's turn the bridge off for a moment, use the select tool, and I'm going to just select the entire back edge of this, uh, this template that I've created. Doesn't matter if you bleed over a little bit onto the underside, that'll be just fine. All right, so I've left all the front profile the exact same, but I've selected the back edge. I'm gonna push T for transform, and that enables me to just drag this straight back. Remember the idea being that I wanna create a through and through slot now through this, and this, when I subtract it, is going to create that. All right, so let's look from this direction. I want it to be perfectly flat. Great. All right, so we'll select that. Now, when you do this, inevitably it's going to create some little areas of mesh that's crossed over one another. That's very easy to fix. Go to your sculpt tools, grab your robust smooth brush, make it real big, and just come smooth those off and you don't have to necessarily go all the way back into this area. You're mainly wanting it uh, smooth with no uh, folds in the mesh up here in the area where that subtraction is going to get done. So we're going through smoothing. Okay, that is good enough. Now I want you to look at what we've created. We've created, um, again, a template that we can use to lay over our trilore and trim that front edge to this exact shape. The back edge is gonna be easy because we just bond it into this temp and then we just cut away all the excess that sticks out. This front edge is what we're concerned most about, right up in here. How do we how do we trim the trilor bar to that exact shape? Okay, now um, do one more thing before you do this Boolean subtraction. I want you to duplicate this, edit, duplicate. So I've got two copies now of this. I'm gonna just hide one of them. Now I've got these two objects. Select your bridge first from your objects browser. Now Control select the trilor and then just go over here to Boolean Difference. And there's your slot, okay? I always uncheck Auto Reduce Results. Sometimes I can throw a, a little monkey wrench in things. Now I'll accept that. And here's our slot. Here is our template for the Trilor Bridge. So you're gonna print two things. You're gonna print the temporary uh, in something like Crown and Bridge MFH, um, if you'd use our software, you, you might can do the, all the gum in pink and the white and tooth colored. However you want to go about doing that, that's fine. But you're going to print this object. And then you're going to also print this object in whatever material, gray, whatever. Just, uh, you, you just use this as a template. You'll print off the, the temp and then you'll print this object. This is going to get laid over the top of that trilor arch bar. And you can just take a pencil and trace along this front edge and then cut your trilor bar to exactly that shape. 
Now, where you have this undulation right here, you're not going to be able to replicate that in three dimensions. So what I'd suggest you do is before you do your tracing, you don't have to have all these little finger extensions. Just take a, a handpiece or, or uh, your model trimmer and just trim this back flush to whatever the deepest surface is. That's going to give it a much more rounded profile, much easier shape to trim. And uh, then you're going to have a trilore um, uh, piece that will slide right into this temp, bonded in with composite, cement, acrylic, whatever you choose. And then you can encase it on the backside with, again, some salt and pepper acrylic. And the end result is going to be a, a really indestructible tent. These hold up incredibly well. So uh, much, much cheaper than milling. Very quick to create, as you can see. Uh, so I hope you find it useful.